trying to do something and I find myself uh, messing up. Okay, yeah, I'm back. I'm back on, on, on focus. So here is, I had a word that I want to share today. It's about God will make a way for you when it seems to be no way. So those of you who are on the radio, um, God will make a way. And it's a scripture that I love so much and I love to talk about. And I'm going to talk about it. It's just a story about a family who went through a lot of tragedy situations and nobody thought they would ever be able to come through. But God make a way when it seems to be no way for them. And I'm just going to share the story. Because maybe you are listening to me today on the radio or you are listening to me on the Facebook or you, you are going to watch this video after I have finished the recording. And what I want you to know that God will make a way for you when it seems to be no way. He's capable to make a way for you when it seems to be no way. And here is the story. It was a family. They are not super, super, super rich. And they are not super, super poor. And this man, a man, Mr. Richard, married his wife. And they have two children. A boy and a girl. And Mr. Richard was well to do in, let's say, a middle class man who has a, a very good promising job that he was working at that time. And um, him and his family were well to do, living a normal life as every one of us uh, who has jobs does. And then, somewhere down the line, they move from the village that they used to live and move into another town. Now, they have a very good, rich family, a friend, a family friend that they used to hang around with them. And they are well to do, very, very wealthy. They are wealthy family. Everything is normal. They don't have the hiccups that Mr. Richard and the family has. But somewhere down the line, Mr. Richard find out that, I mean, have a beautiful two family, a, a, a girl and a boy with his lovely wife. And somehow he fall in love with another woman who was his mistress. And... The mistress took over the marriage and Mr. Richard has to force his first wife and the two children to leave the home. And he took them to another city and dumped them there and came back and lived with the mistress and the, the new rich family that they have found that they become uh, their family friend. So, the mother of the first wife and the two children struggle in the other city, sister city that he took them to. And they lived there for some time and they grew. The man never bothered to, to take care of them. He never came and looked after them. He didn't spend time to visit them or know what their whereabout, I mean, their well-being was. So as time goes on, we all know how life sometimes take a toll. So somehow, the, the life of this family, a tragedy began to hit them. It was first the mother who forsake. And then in between the time that mom was sick, the brother, uh, the son, also took ill. So mom was sick, little brother was sick. So a little Emily 
became the caretaker of these two people. And Emily has grown up to be a little young lady. And uh, at about 16 years old. So now she has to take care of her mom and her brother. And sadly, the brother's illness grew so bad that they need money to take care of the brother. And he doesn't have, Emily doesn't have no help, no one, no one. And, and she doesn't want her brother to die. Neither do she want her mom to die. So she has to do something that unthinkable. She has to do something unthinkable to be able to take care of this family that she has now been the breadwinner. So she went to town, desperately need to do something and he heard about a family friend who Somebody, no, a rich young man who went to somewhere and he was bit by a snake. A very dangerous, poisonous snake. And the only thing that can save this uh, young man's life is to find a virgin and sleep with and then when he find a virgin and sleep with it will destroy the poison so there were a family who were running around town looking for somebody to ask to do this for them to save this rich young man's life and so and that this, this young man's name is Mr. Richard. So Richard was dying. He's from a nearby village and he's very rich. They are huge. They are very, very well-to-do family. So during the desperation of this uh, man's uh, situation, Emily decided he need money to look after her mom. And her brother so she decided she's going to do that to get the money to go and save the brother's life this is not a life she want to but out of desperation she need to do this she need to go and do this to save his mom and his brother's life so she agreed to do this and she went in and as Emily was talking about the experience he had in this episode, it was really, really a tragedy situation. And when he went in with this young man to do whatever she has to do to get this money to go and look after the, the mom and the brother, this young man was looking at her behavior and she realized she hasn't done anything of that nature and this guy was also in a dead row so the conversation that took place between the time she was trying she was he was afraid what he was doing because he realized the guy the little girl was a virgin and he was telling you seems like you haven't done this before and trying to talk then to tell not to be afraid and whatnot and whatnot and little uh, Emily closed her eyes and took this poison situation out of help this guy to sustain his life at this crucial time. And after all is said and done, they gave her the money that they offered to give to her if she would do, she would save this young man's life. Emily took the money and ran and go to see his I mean her mom and her brother. When she got to the hospital, she saw them wheeling the mother into the surgery room. Uh, 
the theater so they can uh, to do the surgery. And she didn't see her brother being well into because the mom needed surgery and the brother also needed surgery. But she came and saw them when she brought the money. She gave it to the doctor and said, I got the money here. Can you take my mom and my brother into the surgery and do the surgery on them? So she did that. But unfortunately, she didn't see her brother being taken into the, the surgery room uh, to perform a surgery on her. So she asked about her brother whereabouts. And the nurses and the doctors told her that, sorry, Miss Emery, we miss your brother. Your brother died. It really, really hurt her because the reason why she went and did what she did to get this money is to save her brother's life. And now she has lost the brother. She got the money. And now she lost her brother. She has also broke her virginity. And that even sent Emily into depression. But she looked at it in a brighter way. Her mom is alive. So she has to kind of control her emotion and also be there for the mother who just left a surgery bed. I mean lying down on the bed trying to save her own life. So when all this old deal passed, she brought the mom home. The mom is alive, but she lost her brother. And the sad thing was, the father has the money that she could have taken care of the family, but she just, he just decided to neglect this family and be with his mistress. So somewhere down the line, the rich family that you became the friend of the, the father and the mother, they are both in the village, uh, approach the mother, uh, the father of this young girl that their son want to get married and there was they they are filthy rich they are really really filthy rich so the father of emily do not want them to go and have bring another girl to marry riches so the riches the money that they have, their wealth, will go to another family. So the man decided she will go and look for his ex-wife and her daughter and talk the daughter to come and marry to uh, Richard. And during the time that they were doing this, Richard, who was beaten by the snake, that God help through Emily has pretend, decided that he's not going to walk like a normal person. He want to be a cripple. So he made himself a cripple. So Emily's father saw Richard as a crippled young man. And the family told them that they have their son, their son has become crippled and also because he became crippled because of him being beaten by the snake. So they are looking for any woman who will marry to a cripple who has lost his potential and his business. He was a big businessman. So the man doesn't want the, the wealth of these people to go anywhere. So he decided he was going to talk his little girl that he threw them away to come and marry to this man so the wealth come into him in other words the father is only for money not for the welfare of their life 
So the man, the father came and went through a family friend that was so dear to Emily and his mother and told them about this uh, upcoming event and encouraged uh, Emily to come and marry this crippled man. And the father promised that there was a diary that he need to return to the mother. And the diary is a huge amount of money that when he drove them out of the house, he has to give it back to the mother, at least to restore them back. So it went on, the conversation went on and on and on. And finally, uh, the father agreed that he will pay all the diary and ransom of money to the mother of Emily. And so Emily said, okay, I will marry this rich man on this condition for the father to restore back his mom's money because he's not going to allow the family to lose the son and also lose the money that belongs to Emily's mother. So agreement was reached and re, uh, Emily's father became happy because he was going to get the wealth. Now, so he went and told Richard family that she has been able to get his daughter to marry to Richard. And, and so they did all the wedding arrangement and uh, Emily's mom didn't like the idea that Emily is going to marry to this Richard because of the way the father treated them. But Emily knows something that the mother didn't know. So one day, they came and picked Emily because bear in mind, they've been thrown away. So their con living condition is not updated. So they, they don't have enough money to upkeep it. So this is a, a young lady that they are coming to pick to go and marry to a rich man whom, whom they don't have money to upkeep themselves very well. So she's not, because there was no money to eat, there was no money to put up with everything. She, she has really lost weight. She looks very, very skinny, but she is beautiful. Skinny but beautiful, and um, so they took care for dress. Uh, uh, this thing for the wedding, so they took her to a store to go and try on for the wedding dress that she was going to wear for the day that the marriage is coming on. Now, why she was in the in the store? It was the same day that somehow, somewhere, Richard, the guy that they were planning to marry her to, came to the same store on the other side of the tuxedo side. And Emily was on the wedding side. And they didn't know, nobody knows that Emily them were in a shop. And Emily doesn't know this Mr. Richard that he was going to marry too. So it was during the trying time and it happens that Emily, where she was trying her clothes, behind the room was the tuxedo. And she heard some people discussing some things over there. And she had a voice that she could recognize. So she decided to sneak and peep and see who are the people talking and the voice. It was the friend who was negotiating with her father to marry this Richard that is crippled. That has been beaten by a snake and she got a uh, uh, cripple and she needs somebody to marry 
him in his predicament and whatnot and whatnot that the story that they have told her to accept this marriage. So when she peeked through the curtains to her amazement, the gentleman that they said he was crippled was literally not a cripple. The man was standing and trying his dresses, I mean his suit. And Emily went, what is going on here? He de she decided to keep it to herself and move on with the whole deal. And she just never let anybody know what she has saw and what she knows. And the conversation went on. It was a lot they talked. So he came to find out, hmm, there's a big deal going on here. But what encouraged her was she wanted to get the money that the father owned to the mother. So she determined she will go through no matter what the whole issue is. No matter the consequence of what she's about to put herself into, she will endure it to the end. So the clothing side of it, uh, testing and everything went on. And she went home. They set up the wedding day. So the wedding day came. Now, few days to the wedding, Emily found out she was pregnant because of that thing she did with the crippled man to get the money to save the mom and the brother's life, which she lost the brother. So now, here is a, a young girl going to get married, and she's trying to get married and get the money for her mother and don't really want the marriage because she's pregnant. And this Richard guy here, she doesn't know what's going on. Now, there is another secret behind this story. And the, the secret is, this Richard guy actually grew up with Emily when they were very young. They lived with them. So they were his childhood best friend. But because the father removed them from the village very early of her life, they haven't connected for a long time because they have been thrown into another village, poor village somewhere, somewhere, somehow out there. But they used to be childhood friends. So during the wedding, did wedding, it happens that they drove, the, the morning came, Emily wear her blue little nice lace wedding uh, dress that was purchased for her. And they drove it. And to her surprise and amaze, the car stopped at the villa. The villa that is pretty next to where when she was a little girl, she used to leave. Now, since this little guy, Richard, grew up, Emily hasn't met him or known him or whatsoever. And she didn't know the tragedy that hit the family either because there's nobody interacting with them. So this uh, event that is going on this side of the town and these people live in this side of the town. Now, what I want to tell you is that no matter what, is happening in your life today. If God will make a way for you and make things work out for your favor, God will do everything that it will take for him to restore that which the enemy has stolen from you. That is why I chose to tell this story this afternoon because I know a lot of you going through bad situations 
and horrible experiences and you asking yourself why me you are asking yourself why me why am i going through this horrible experience why things like this happening to me stop the why and just sit still even if you have some clues keep your mouth shut because you do not know what is going to work out for your favor here come little emily dressed in his little brood dress that was purchased for her from the wedding i mean wedding store and the car stopped at the villa and the she came out and they took her to the big mansion and master richard has his own quarters or bungalow but they took her to the big reception place you all know when you go to a big mansion and where the entertainment session and whatnot and whatnot so she walked into the place and stood there and mr richard master richard uh, they wheel him in with his uh, wheelchair and he looked at this man because he doesn't know that he saw him standing on his feet trying his wedding clothes in this in the boutique okay where the tuxedos were for sale i mean when they were with the, when he was buying his tuxedo Richard didn't know that Emily saw him standing on his feet and he wasn't crippled at that time. And now he's coming in as a crippled man. So when they met, the Richard, the cripple, requested that the family should allow him and Emily have a chat by themselves. So they allowed them to go into a private place and to talk. So when they got there, the Richard looked into Emily and asked Emily, Why in the heavens you agree to marry to a person like me, a crippled man like me, miserable man like me, that you have never met before and yajira yajira yadula and emily sat there quietly because emily knows something rich don't know in the back of emily's mind this man is not a cripple and he's pretending number one two she's pregnant so what do you do when you are in such a predicament you have got pregnant by trying to save your family life. You did something terrible to save your family life. And because of what you did, you lost your mom. I mean, you lost your brother. You couldn't get there on time to provide the money to save your brother's life. So you lost your brother. Your mother is alive. Your father has come to talk you into a marriage that your your heart is not in it and all is because your father want to retain wealth and let his daughter marry to this rich family that they've met and they are family friends for whatever and he doesn't want their wealth to go to somebody else so he's forcing his daughter to marry to that family so that the wealth come into him and his family even though this is a child.